Exactly. One of these lucky ladies is going to win a dream date with former monkey Peter Tork. <laughs> You must, you must be very excited about tonight. I'm thrilled about tonight. Yeah. I don't even want to give it away. I'm so thrilled. All right, well, I'm, let me... Uh, as you know, tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, someone in our studio audience will win a date with former monkey Peter Tork. Now, here's how this works. Sure, go ahead and applaud if you like. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, every girl in the world wanted a date with one of the monkeys, but there just weren't enough of those lovable mop tops to go around. Today, there is a new generation of girls, and they still want dates with the monkeys, and who can blame them? So, Late Night is proud to have the opportunity to let one lucky girl in our studio audience win a date with former monkey Peter Tork, ladies and gentlemen. Here's... Now, bear with me, girls. I just have to explain the rules first. It's the, something the legal department is making me do. Before the show, we pre-selected five finalists for the Win-A-Date contest. Their names are sealed in envelopes and, and will be chosen by drawing. So now, if we may, let's take one more look at our finalists, who all must be on needles and pins right now. I know I am. All of those folks are the... Uh, where? Oh, there they are. They... Okay, now, we're going to bring out Mr. Torque right now, and he's going to select his dream date for the evening. excited about all of this. I'm excited too, David. All right, now, uh, may we have the drum, please? Uh, the lovely Marie O'Donnell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's all right. I'll get them half sold later. Do we, uh, do we, uh... Thank you very much, Marie. Now... Do we beat the drum, David? We, uh... Um, we're going... I'm going to spin this, is that correct? All right, we'll mix these up. Okay, Peter. Uh, How we fix your time, for you? Select the lucky winner of the dream date with Peter Torque, if you will. Go I ahead. know, I know, my hand is guided <laughs> by a power greater than myself. And here it is. Yeah, it's funny. There's no name on the envelope. No, we'll open it up. And we'll oh, see open who it up. The I lucky know. winner is. <laughs> Very exciting here on the David Letterman show. I'm you want me to uh, read that for you? Uh, you want it, please? Yes, all right. Get ready, ladies. <laughs> Esther Pollock. Congratulations, uh, Esther. This is uh, Peter Tork, and uh, it probably goes without saying that uh, you, you must have been a big Monkees fan, huh? Yeah. Uh, let's see. For, for everybody else who was not chosen, uh, do not be a despondent. We have uh, Monkees albums for everyone else who was not chosen. All right. Now. Dollar, uh, dollar 47 in the clearance bins. All right. Now, Esther. Uh, <laughs> Oh, they've grown up, have they? Uh, <laughs> uh, Steady, uh, David. Bill Wendell, uh, where uh, is our happy couple going to spend their dream date? <laughs> Dave, Peter, and his date will be whisked off to Rockefeller Center snazzy green room in the heart of New York City, New York, where they'll watch a taping of America's fastest-growing late-night show, Late Night with David Letterman. <laughs> Very exciting. We'll just go. All Can right. Uh, yeah, Esther uh, and Peter, if you come on over here, uh, I know you uh, have a lot to talk about. We're uh, going over to the dream uh, date of a lifetime. Thank you, Bill. Here in the uh, Esther, this is the green room. Where are you from? Uh, Florida, Florida. St. Louis. 
Florida and St. Louis. At the same time? All right. I think Esther's done some time. Uh, now, just come on in here. This is our actual green room. Have a seat there, Esther, if you will. And uh, Peter, over. Uh, let me introduce you to your. Here, let me help you with that. Okay, you'll have a seat. Let me introduce you to your chaperone uh, for the evening. This is Larry Bud Melman. <laughs> and uh, Peter, did you have a, a flower for uh, Larry Bud? Oh, uh, Peter. Uh, there you go, Esther. We have a. That's uh, going to be my pleasure to. Anything you want. Waiter, could you step in here? Uh, see to it that these folks get the best of everything and go ahead and put it on my tab and, and nothing is too good uh, for you folks tonight. Congratulations, Esther. I uh, will be checking back with you during the course of the evening. Peter, nice to see you. We'll be talking with you a little bit later. Fried chicken is good enough. Whatever you want. Have a nice time. And uh, there will be photos and a souvenir album after all of this is over. Uh, my heart is thumping a mile a minute. We're going to pause now, but we'll be right back with Joe Piscopo. Very nice, Esther. Very nice, Peter. See you. Yes, there's the happy couple, Esther Pollock and former monkey Peter Tork. Of course, I guess once you're a monkey, always a monkey, I would think. And, uh, we'll be talking with uh, both of those folks a little bit later. We have... <laughs> they seem to be spellbound. I, I think they're becoming more than good friends. Um, we'll be right back to talk with Peter Tork. Paul Schaefer, uh, welcome back to the show. Now, tomorrow night, uh, we want to mention this one more time, our Christmas program. Tomorrow night, we're going to get it done early and out of the way with so you can really enjoy the holidays when they roll around, <laughs> whenever they roll around. But tomorrow night, right here on this network, our Christmas show. Now, my next guest, whom you've actually already met this evening, was a member of a musical group that has sold over 36 million records. Their television series was also a huge success all over the world, many, many countries around the world. It is still seen in most of them, uh, though the band broke up in 1969. Hard to believe, truly a phenomenon. Welcome again, Peter Tork. Seat, sir. Thank you. How, uh, I do. Uh, first of all, how is the big date going? How are you oh, and Esther getting along? I, uh, famously, it couldn't be better. I'm mm -hmm. just so glad that I know I told you it was going to be some extra something was going to guide my hand, and it's true. It's been one of the uh, been a high point in uh -huh. my day. What what kind it, of things are you doing back there? Well, we have uh, we've been graciously served. Well, there's Esther been, now. She's, oh, she's watching Esther, you talk right now. Hi, Esther. How are you? I <laughs> uh, hope it's uh, hope it's all right. We uh, you can see that we're having. Uh, we were having uh, pizza and chicken. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. This, uh, <laughs> there's no, <laughs> no fare too good for uh, us. I, I'm really glad that the... Uh, At the height of, of the, the success of your uh, television program... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, cut you off. That's quite all right. Please, I um, didn't have anything to say. Did, sure. did, did you ever... <laughs> Uh, did you ever have uh, uh, a win-a-date contest for real that one of those fan magazines would sponsor? Um, yeah, but uh, I lost. Mm. <laughs> You didn't get to go out with I the... I didn't get the... I didn't yeah. get to win the girl, no. Uh, for people who... Uh, it's hard to believe people watching don't know about the television show, The Monkees and the group and so forth. How did that begin? How did the group come together? How did the show start? Yeah, actually, well, the, the thing about the group, it's interesting. That's sort of when you say The Monkees, you think of a couple of things. One was a TV show. One was for actors who played characters with their own names. Like right there, it says Peter Torpen. Mm -hmm. That was the name of the character I played. Right. He was really stupid. <laughs> um, but it's all right, I'm real intelligent, folks. 
That's, that's the chaperone uh, yes, there. Yes, our uh, chaperone. He's taking good care uh, of uh, Esther. Yeah, I was worried that maybe he'd make a move on her while you were gone, but... Uh, well, apparently... Uh, Esther is an enormously attractive woman. There she there is. There she is, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Esther asked me to put in a good word for her. She said you, you noticed that the Losers got albums, but Esther wanted me to make sure we that she got, we got one yeah. for Esther. Now you were talking about have an album. It's... You, you were talking about how you were four oh, yes. actors on your show. Um, well, the, the, the cast of the show was put together by, uh, by audition, and uh, I tried out for the part and I got it. Uh -huh. Yep. Now, had you musical experience to that point? Yes, I had. I'd been a singer in the Greenwich Village stages for two and a half years, uh, singing my little ditties with my banjo and guitar. Uh, Nesmith, Mike Nesmith, my ex-partner, and if you're watching this, Mike, eat your heart out. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he'd been a folk singer, and uh, Mickey and Davey, who were s selected uh, for their acting experience, were also musicians, although they weren't uh, instrumentalists, mm -hmm. you know. We, we, they learned how to play their instruments, and uh, when we went on the road, uh, we actually did play our own. Yeah, now tell me about that. The show came first, and then the, the record started to come, uh, right? As it were, yeah. Well, the, the whole concept, as far as I know, the whole thing, they don't tell me everything, folks, I'll tell you. Uh, the whole thing was thought of as a package, and uh, they selected the guys, and they hired Don Kirshner to make the music. Um, and uh, which he did, uh, and uh, very successfully, too. The records uh, have, uh, at one point, the Monkees, as a recording project, outsold the Beatles. Mm -hmm. um, I find myself, it's real interesting, I find myself taking only very little credit for all of that, because one of the things about the project, it serves to distinguish between the project and the actors and the, and the crew. Mm -hmm. When you said the Monkees on stage, you meant the four actors or musicians or whatever we were at the time. But the Monkees as a whole thing was a television show production. It's a, like you're not the David Letterman show, you're David Letterman right. starring in the... Yeah. And it's like that kind of a thing. Now the Monkees were also a show. When you uh, started to become more than a TV show, you became a musical group. You had to go out... That's right. And That's now right. How, how, what happened when you had to perform the music that had not been recorded by you guys to begin with? or or had it. We, well, uh, the first two albums were put out pretty much without our help as instrumentalists. Mm -hmm. And we went out on the road and we did those two, we did most of the songs from those. Uh, I'm an experienced musician. I've been, I've been playing uh, piano and guitar and French horn practically continuously mm -hmm. since I've been nine years old. And boy, am I winded. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, was it, uh, oh God, well, was it more difficult than we would uh, imagine it to be or not quite so difficult? I don't know. How difficult do you imagine it I, to be, David? Uh, well, to me, it seems it would be impossible if I had to now suddenly become a musician to play music that people had heard me play on a TV show that I never played. Well, I don't, uh, I don't know, David, did you ever play any music at all? No, no. You ever took piano or no. sang or anything no. like that? Well, it'd probably be very tough yeah, for you. Yeah, it would be almost tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the other hand, but what I, the point I'm trying to make is these guys did have musical experience. Yeah. Mickey was a group, a lead singer, he was a group all by himself. <laughs> Stop. He was a lead singer for a group called The Missing Links. Ironic, huh? <laughs> uh, and uh, David Jones was a singer on Broadway. And so neither of these guys was like musically bereft, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Uh, and uh, so when it came da time to just teaching them an instrument, or uh, they picked it up uh, readily. So it was uh, Mike, and Mike was an experienced musician, and I was, and we just taught these guys simple parts. We reduced the parts to a mere smidgen of their former selves. And uh, yeah. went out on the road and now, we enjoyed ourselves. And incidentally, one more thing, David, I have to say, and will he? Um, when we first played, when we first played, we were doing the pilot. We just got, we fired up our amps, and we just played for the first time together, never having rehearsed, and we got the crew to dance. Mm -hmm. So that uh, the point I'm trying to make here again, this, <sighs> Peter, stop. <laughs> we were not as bad musicians as people were making us out to be. That's all I'm trying to oh, say. Oh, okay. No, but that wasn't the, that wasn't what I was implying. I was just curious about the process, and I know that one of your opening acts when the Monkees was up to, uh, tr uh, performing was Jimi Hendrix. And uh, now this is a, a strange-sounding combination. We'll find out about that and many, many other things with Peter Clark. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Peter Tork is with us, and he, we, when, the, when the band was touring, uh, the, the former, the band to which I used to belong, the group, uh, yeah, the yeah, Monkees. Uh, Jimmy Hendrix was an opening act. Jimmy is Hendrix that correct? Was an opening act. Oh, poor Jimmy. Boy, did he ever not know what he was bargaining for? Jimmy Hendrix, one of the great musicians of all time, a blazing pioneer of the guitar, a man. <laughs> when I. Uh, 
When I get to rock and roll heaven, I'll tell them how you felt. Um, here's, um, if I ever get to rock and roll heaven. Uh, now, so here's a man, a, a, bla pi a blaze training pain of pine of... <laughs> Trail blazing pioneer of music. Uh, opening with his music, which was then even newer than it is today, and it still has not been essentially uh, put into, into the past, uh, opening for a bunch of screaming teeny boppers who wanted only to see their little, you know, the sparkling colory dots there they want, that they got on their color TVs, like you do right there at home. They wanted to see the people on screen, and so Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> we want the monkeys, we want the monkeys. <laughs> and Jimi said, well, and, the me and he did something that I can't do on television, and you'd have to blank it out. And, um, what did he do? Jimmy did what? He, he, he made an obscene gesture. Oh, okay. On to stage the, or to the, or to to the, the, kids, the little yes. monkey fans? To the poor little monkey yeah. fans, yes. And those poor, and I mean, I know that there are many out there now who regret to their, will regret to their dying day that they didn't stand still and listen to this giant. I myself, we made it a point to get out early to the concerts. Yeah. The few concerts that the, <laughs> poor Jimmy. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I really, I have to say, uh, it's, it, was a, it was a tragic mistake from Jimmy's point of view, and uh, while I got an awful lot of enjoyment, we go early and listen to this yeah. great music blazing, and then we go out and dance for the kids. How did he get uh, added to the bill? I mean, whose idea was we, it? That... Um, we saw him at Monterey Pop Festival, Mickey and I, and Mickey pulled the strings it took to get him uh, on the tour. As a matter of fact, at a certain level, I think it probably was very prestigious for him to have been thrown off of a monkey tour. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good on his that's, resume. That's right, yeah. thrown off a monkey tour. <laughs> uh, what, was, what was that like? Did you, did you get a real sense that you guys were... Uh, I mean, it must have been very exciting. Were huh? what? Dave? Were, were a, uh, a force in music to be contended with? Certainly not. <laughs> uh, no, as a matter of fact, uh, the records were made relatively artificially, at least, you know, there's this kind of, there's this uh, abstract idea that the groups are supposed to be playing on their own albums, and we didn't do that on our first two albums, and uh, the records were mighty successful, and uh, we reaped the artist's benefits, mm -hmm. which I spent profligately, and... Uh, I couldn't even used to spell that word. <laughs> let me let me let me interrupt you here. You you bring up profits. Now this thing turned into a monster because it was on one network, and I think it eventually was on all three networks. Eventually wasn't it? on all three and networks. And yeah. around the world, I was looking mm -hmm. at a list of the countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the music uh, in Japan uh, uh, just a, a, it hit yep. all over again. Recently, yes, just recently, late last year, for the first four monkey albums were in the top 30 album sales in japan now do you a it's, a, it's i know a, it's staggering do you realize are you getting any of that um yeah the, well, the record good. sales when the, the now the thing is about television it declines uh, every time they show a given episode the actors get a little bit less mm -hmm. and less until the 10th episode the 11th episode Nothing. Yeah. But the records, uh, you get the same share of. It's the sales that go yeah. while they keep on selling. Uh, ask Lucy. Uh, is there any chance of, a, uh, of, of the, the group, the four of you gentlemen, getting back together and touring or doing more records or doing another television show or any of that? Make me an offer. <laughs> to, to reunite the monkeys. Yes, uh, right, to it, reunite the monkeys. Is monkey. there interest enough in that in, the, in this country? Well, it, it's, it's hard to say. There's a lot of interest. A lot of people say, why don't you guys get together? And I say, I give up. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what know it, what but, have you done since? What are you doing currently? Uh, I'm glad you asked me that question, David. Uh, uh, let's see, this is uh, tomorrow night. I will be in Old Saybrook at a place called the Cabaret, performing as a solo. Just me and my banjo and my guitar, uh, and hopefully an audience. And uh, <laughs> the following day, at one in the afternoon, I'll be on the New London Pier at a place called the Sail Fest. So if you like the tall ships, I imagine that that's a good place to see. And uh, I'll be doing those kinds of things. And in August, I'll be taking my band, a rock band of uh, some kind, to uh, Cape Cod for two shows in early August. And we'll be going to Bun Ratties in Boston. So you've been performing all along mm -hmm. and continue yep, to do yep. so. Yep, I've been performing uh, music with a band. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, except uh, they told me not to bring my guitar. I, was, I think maybe they were, they were afraid I was going to play it. No, no, no. I think it, what we're going to do now is uh, bring out your dream date to uh, Esther Pollock. Uh, It'll be great and, to see her again. I've, I've missed her. And Peter. Yes, uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. Earlier, and I have some questions, Esther, that our staff uh, has asked me to ask you. How was your dream date with Peter? Very nice. Okay. Uh, was it everything you thought it would be? More. Uh -huh. 
what is your favorite monkey's song? <laughs> you okay. Uh, Peter, would you say that this, that song was written with a girl like her in mind? Well, let's see that if she had mentioned a song. Let's go if on. She had mentioned mind. a song, and she didn't. Men you didn't mention a. Didn't mention no. a song. David. There's yes, certainly, many. easily. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the list is endless. In the uh, a girl you, like you, yes. If you could have a date with another one of the monkeys, who would it be, and why? No, I'm satisfied. With you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Esther, where were you when you first heard the monkeys were breaking up? <laughs> Don't remember. Okay, let me, by the way, Peter, what are the other uh, members of the uh, organization doing now? We know what you're doing, and you mentioned, uh, oh, uh, you didn't really say, did no, you? No, I didn't, and, uh, with any luck, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, You're knocking it out. Uh, okay, one more here, Esther. I guess when you wake up tomorrow, this will all seem like a dream. Oh, I see. So to make those memories last forever, we have, first of all, the Monkey's Greatest Hits. There you have a Thank copy you. of that. And right here we have your scrapbook of the evening. Oh. Your dream date with Peter <laughs> Hey, David. David, where's mine? Oh, we I have a wonderful thing for you. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. It was a pleasure meeting you, and thank you for uh, thank having you, your dream thank date you, with Esther. Esther. Thanks to the studio audience. Also, thanks to Joe Piscopo, uh, Paul Schaefer in the band, and, of course, our announcer, Bill Wendell. Tomorrow night, our big Christmas special from SCTV, Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis, comedian George Miller, and a look at Christmas customs around the world. Mm, good night. <laughs>